Hello and welcome to In My Opinionation, your weekly Blossom recap podcast. Each week we recap an episode of Blossom and give you our thoughts and opinionations. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I am your host, Mallory, joined as always by my co-host, Jen. Hello. And Eric. Hola. How you guys doing? Great. Hola. I'm feeling feeling fancy today, apparently. (laughs) Ooh. Fancy, fancy. Fancy what? Because my pants are fancy. They're fancy, fancy. Okay. Never we mind. started <laughs> early, guys. <laughs> I have lack of sleep adding the <laughs> <laughs> Well, on that note, uh Ooh. this week's episode is season one, episode six. I ain't got no buddy. It aired on February eleventh, nineteen ninety one. It was written by Dave Landsberg and directed by the one, the only. Zane Busby. Zane Busby. (laughs) So a little synopsis here. Blossom and Six get into a big fight when Six makes friends with the new girl in school. Meanwhile, the Russo kids try to hide Nick's final divorce papers from him. So the only trivia that I have is that this was the fifth episode filmed, but I think my co-hosts have a little bit of trivia of their own. Yes. So this trivia is coming to us courtesy of friend of the podcast, Matt Moore. I would like to make an official statement, if I may. (laughs) So I'm going to do my official statement voice. Hello, friends. It's me, Jen, from In My Opinionation. You know, the podcast you're listening to. We've had a lot of fun here on IMO, creating an imaginary backstory for Blossom's season one director, Zane Busby. But I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the real Zane Busby, a badass lady director who Mm -hmm. worked on Blossom, as well as cultural phenomenons, The Golden Girls, Married with Children, and Sister Sister, just to name a few. What? Will will we still say her name like an old-timey director from the 30s? Yes. Absolutely, because fake Zane Busby is great. But to the real Zane Busby, if you're listening to this, Sorry for misgendering you before, and we here at IMO thank you for your contribution to making Blossom an awesome feminist. I don't think we said if it was a boy or a girl. I think we did. I I think you're missing the two most important parts, is that Zane Busby isn't only a director, but she's also an actress, appearing in such things as Up in Smoke as Jade East. And a Rolling Stones reporter in This Is Spinal Tap. Mm -hmm. This just sounds like the coolest person ever. Right? So I don't think we personally misgendered Zane Busby, but I think we got so into the our character's backstory that we never really explained who the real person was. They yeah, we just loved the name. We just loved the backstory and the fantasy. So I wanted to give a shout out to the real Zane Busby. I Zane am Busby. I'm impressed. Thanks for more. <laughs> I want to meet her. No. Doesn't she, she looks sound super cool? cool. In all of her photos, her IMDb page is like pictures of her from America, America Thon, which is a movie from 1979 and, and Class Reunion, which looks like a horror movie, but I don't know if it is. I can't believe it took us six episodes to look up who our favorite person ever really is. <laughs> ah. And you know what? She's still our favorite person ever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This, so. <laughs> this, this changes nothing except making her more of my favorite person. Right. Just the the shows that she worked on and directed having that same like badass feminist slant. Mm. Yeah. In that same era just makes her cooler. So yeah. it makes more sense. Same Busby. Uh, I now picture yeah. her less as like a 1930s gangster and more as like an early 90s riot girl. Ooh, I, could, I like that. Yeah, yeah, there's a good picture that would go with that. Let, let's throw that up on the uh, the social medias this week. Yeah, that will be. I will uh, make sure that goes up on our, our socials. Brilliant. I'm done commandeering the podcast. I'm glad that both Matt and myself have both looked up Zane Busby this past week. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's great timing. Dang. It's fantastic. So if there's no further trivia, then we can jump right into the bu- 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 breakdown. Hell yeah, it took. <laughs> told you guys <laughs> all right so this episode starts with blossom and six studying for french class in blossom's bedroom they both absolutely hate french so blossom proposes that because they live in america and go to an american school with american classmates they should speak with american speech american speak which is spanish 
Yep. Mm -hmm. So then six says that it's late and she has to get to school and Blossom says it's only 730. So I needed to pause here and ask if it was a normal thing to go over to your friend's house at seven in the morning to study before class. Because my morning routine was wake up half an hour before I have to be at the bus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's serial time, 730. Yeah. (laughs) I was barely making it to class, let alone... Going mm-hmm. to someone else's house and hanging out first. Right? Oh, yeah. Although, to be fair, when I was little, my friends, uh, like the bus stop used to be in front of my friend's house. So sometimes we'd sit in his house and just play with toys beforehand. But that was like when we were really little. That's yeah. different, though. You were waiting for something to come to you. That's true. Yeah, it wasn't like actively I'm going to go hang out at my friend's house for an hour or two before school starts. Yeah. I don't need to see my friends that much. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so six says that she has to leave early because there is a new student starting and she shares a lot of classes with this new student. So the guidance counselor has asked her to show this girl around. But she mentions that everyone's going to see this new band from England on Saturday and the band is called Rupture and they are known for one thing specifically, which is throwing up on their audience in the last number in the last number. Mm -hmm. But don't worry, it's only the first three rows. I was thinking of the logistics of this. So you're in the middle of a song. Yeah. So does the band just collectively stop playing at the same time? And, you know, I don't want to get graphic, but do whatever you got to do to make yourself simultaneously vomit, because that would ruin the experience for me. For me, too. But apparently there are people who enjoy this kind of thing. Iggy Pop used to do this. Yeah. I was going to ask if either of you knew of an equivalent. I yeah. I couldn't name a specific one like Eric, but I do remember being in university in like weird theater classes talking about like experimental art and like mm-hmm. counterculture and that kind of stuff and hearing about bands that would do stuff like this. Yeah. Ew. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Uh, so, so Blossom's not too keen about going to this concert, but she decides to think about it and they'll talk, they'll talk later when they meet up at the mall that night, it's Monday, they go to the mall every Monday. Uh, so they'll talk about it later. They give each other these very Parisian air kisses on the cheek (laughs) and wish each other au revoir as six heads out. So then scene two, we're in the kitchen. Joey is trying to study math. He tells Blossom that he hates math because you always have to have the exact answer. Which, coincidentally, is why I liked math, even though I never felt like I was good at it. I was like, there's an answer and there's a wrong answer. I like English, and this is why I got into English, because it might not be right, but if you can explain well enough why you think it's right. That's all that matters. You can still get a decent grade. (laughs) Yeah. So Blossom says, what we've all been thinking for the past five or six episodes If you put as much time into algebra as you do into sex education, you'd be a whiz at math. And Joey replies, if it comes to being a whiz at math or a whiz at sex, I know where I'll be whizzing. I I had to stop the episode at this point. It does not paint a very good mental picture. I thought that was hilarious. We learn a lot about him in that particular moment. We do. Some showers are golden. Oh, you know, I know we were all thinking that, but you didn't have to the say audience it. may not have. <laughs> now you are. <laughs> so as we're all dealing with that mental image, Blossom notices a piece of mail that just arrived for Nick from their mom. So it must be the final divorce papers. And again, I want to pause here about how the mail just arrived at 730 in the morning. I Maybe that happens somewhere. Yeah, there's some. Does it? I feel like I've never gotten mail earlier than like eight in the morning. Yeah. Maybe they're at the beginning of Of the the mail person's route. Maybe. I feel like newspapers I would expect to come at like six or seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But mail, I wouldn't. I don't know. Because I would expect that like the postal worker goes in at eight and gets their thing of mail and then goes like they're not in there at six. Like, yeah. Wouldn't that have to be couriered legal papers? You can't just send that in the mail, right? This is the 90s. No one cared uh, about that yeah. stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think maybe if it's registered mail, too. Like, that's how you do, mm-hmm. like, if you're leaving a lease or stuff, it's registered. So, I don't know. So, Joey says he doesn't want to be around when Blossom gives Nick the mail. And they argue about who should give 
Nick these papers. Blossom says Joey should do it because he's older. Joey says he doesn't want to because his birthday's coming up. So we all know Joey's priorities. Not Nick's birthday. Joey's, Joey's birthday. birthday. Yes. Is it his sixteenth birthday or seventeenth birthday? Doesn't matter. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah, it doesn't matter, but I do think it's his 16th because of the way that all the episodes have been. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he's probably thinking he'll get a car or something, but I don't think. Anyways. For the ladies. Ugh. For the ladies, yeah. So like two weeks ago, when Blossom was afraid to tell Stephanie about stealing, Blossom is now worried to give Nick the papers because she'll, she thinks it's, it'll break his heart. So very similar oh. to the episode with, with Tony and his stealing girlfriend so tony then enters and announces that he's rich because he read an article about someone who sold a script for three million dollars so he figures that he can do the same and in today's money i looked this up in today's money three million dollars is about 5.8 million seems like that's pretty good for a spec script yeah it seems it seems okay like it seems you could you could be set on five million for sure damn sure i can buy one house in canada one. <laughs> <laughs> but only if it's not in toronto hamilton or vancouver exactly. oh, kill me anyways <laughs> so tony says he has all the ingredients for a hit movie which are paper a pencil and a great title in this case his title is naked chick academy i'm uh-huh. sold uh, well so is joey you and joey are all on the naked chick academy train <laughs> so blossom then asked tony to give nick the papers because she doesn't have the heart to give it to him and joey notes that nick's been in a funk lately but tony agrees saying that if he's learned one thing in life is that pain is a part of life so then nick en- enters he's disheveled wearing his pjs and has his bathrobe just slovenly thrown over him certainly looks like he's had a terrible night's sleep so the kids put on their brightest smiliest faces and wish nick a good morning in unison like something out of the brady bunch just completely out of <laughs> character for these three kids so Nick immediately knows something's up because this isn't how they normally be- behave. Plus, it's too early for cheerful. Right? Yes. This is me every morning, even yeah. if I had a good sleep. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm just like, don't talk to me. Yeah. Let me. Yeah. Nobody talk. <laughs> no. So Tony tries to give Nick the papers. But before he does, he asks Nick, Nick how his gig was the night before. Presumably, he's assuming that the gig went well and Nick enjoys mm-hmm. his job. So it's going to put him in a big mo- a, uh, a good mood to talk about it. But Nick says that the gig was a favor for his, quote, ex-friend, Bill Richmond. Now, I want to know, did the name Bill Richmond sound familiar to either of you? Yes. Yes, that is the correct answer. Because <laughs> I just thought it was a generic name. Because Bill Richmond was the screenwriter for the episode, My Sister's Keeper. Oh, my God, that's right. As well as a few episodes later on in the series. So I did a little bit of a deep dive taking my notes from Jen here (laughs) and doing a deep dive on who Bill Richmond was. So he was an American producer, writer, composer, actor, and musician. According to Wikipedia, he began his career as a jazz musician in the 40s, the late 40s, working as a journeyman drummer for people like Frank Sinatra, Peggy Lee, Harry James, Les Brown, and Nelson Riddle. In the late 50s, he transitioned to writing comedy for Jerry Lewis. And his writing credits also include Laugh-In, The Carol Burnett Show, I Dream of Jeannie, and Three's Company, among many others. Holy crap. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I liked this little neat shout out that they snuck in for one of their own writers. Yeah, that's Uh, great. You forgot that he was the co-writer on The Nutty Professor. (laughs) Was he? Yeah. Come which on. which nutty professor the original one the jerry lewis one well there you go i said jerry lewis yeah but you didn't say the nutty professor <laughs> okay well nah, 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 nah. <laughs> <laughs> so getting back to nick's gig he tells the kids that uh he played at an oompa festival until 3 a.m sandwiched between an accordion and a tuba so mm-hmm. clearly his night did not go well so nick finishes his spiel about his terrible night by asking tony what he wanted to give him and tony makes the split second decision to ditch the papers and give nick a hug instead (laughs) but not just give nick a hug calling blossom and joey to join in this group hug which again super out of character for these kids (laughs) so cute the way he did it he's like oh well what did you have to give me this hug (laughs) 
swoops in is so cute. I love it. Adorable. So Nick is clearly unsettled and he knows something's up. He can tell they're hiding something. So he lists off what he thinks they might be hiding. So he asks Joey if he flunked out of school. He asks <laughs> Tony if he fell off the wagon. And then he asks Blossom if, they're, if she's pregnant. And of course, the answer to all of those is no. So Nick tells the kids that sooner or later, he f- he'll figure out what they're hiding. And he heads out of the kitchen with his coffee. He also asks, did you do anything to my car? And did you yes. say if this aired or was in production before or after the who's in oh, charge? That's a good question. Because so, that changes that question. <laughs> yeah. So this was the ninth episode filmed. And who's in charge here was the third. Mm. I, I like that even better now because. Or sorry, now, this was the fifth episode filmed. Okay. But still came after two episodes after uh, who's in charge here. So anytime he now asks, did you do anything to my car? It's because he has to ask now. Yes and no, because at the end of that episode, he doesn't believe that that Joey actually lost the car. Mm, We don't know what happened in between. That's true. (laughs) That's true. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm head cannoning it. (laughs) I'm sure he found out eventually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he must have. Yeah. So Tony says that Nick isn't ready to deal with the news of the divorce papers, but he will give Nick the papers. So I just want to see how you guys felt about Tony delaying giving Nick the papers because two episodes again ago, he was smacking his head on the table to prove that he wasn't made of glass and mm-hmm. that you can go to people with difficult things. And now he's doing the exact same thing that Blossom did with him. I feel like Again, as a person who is not cognizant of literally anything in the morning, waiting past that moment was a good idea. Should have given it to him maybe in the afternoon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait till the man wakes up first, maybe. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. So I can see where he was coming from. But yeah, definitely should have put it shouldn't have put it off as long as they did. But Tony wasn't he wasn't in a bad mood at the time, right? Like Nick had been constantly in a bad mood. at That's true. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. There's also the scenario where they had just left the divorce papers with the mail and let Nick find them. And then none of them have to be responsible for it. Oh, they're dumb. I didn't even think about that. Oh, this is someone's like chore to, to divvy out the mail. Like, I know some kids like seeing the names and be like, hey, hey come on. Yeah, is there one for I me? don't think this family is that put together. I no. don't know. They seem to talk <laughs> about a lot of things and they have like a schedule for f- cooking for Blossom and stuff like that. Like, I don't know. They are sort of put together, but sort of mm. not. Sometimes okay. they're put together in some ways and very not put together in other yeah. ways. So I need to, I swear I'm not going to talk about costumes this entire episode, but holy hell, the costumes in this episode. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm going to contain myself, but I need to talk about Blossom's outfit. Okay. For this day. Did you guys have thoughts on it? Because I died a little. Uh, I... I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but yes. Oh no, this is, okay. (laughs) Okay, so if this is a thing that's coming up later, we will talk about it later. Yeah. I have nothing to comment on. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so moving right along. We are in the school cafeteria, and Blossom bumps into her friend Doris. Doris is in this very bright tie-dyed shirt and wearing a huge, obvious mullet wig. And Doris explains that she's wearing this wig because she decided to shave her head like Sinead O'Connor, but it turned out she had a huge birthmark on the top of her head, and that without the wig, she looks like Gorbachev's twin sister. (laughs) Timely reference. (laughs) Yeah. So for those who don't know, Gorbachev was the president of the Soviet Union during this time, and he was bald with a big birthmark on his head. Hmm. So Doris asks Blossom if she can join her for lunch, and Blossom says, sure, but they need to save a seat for six. Uh, who is late because she's showing the new girl around. And Doris says that she's heard about this new girl, Adrian, who is supposedly gorgeous and cool. And then Doris leaves. Yeah, I don't know if Doris was meant to be a character that we see later or just a filler, but she's a little odd. Yeah, it just felt super weird to me that she's like, can I sit down? And Blossom's like, yeah. And then she Mm -hmm. says one sentence and then gets up and leaves again. Like, what? why did she sit down in the first place? She's the exposition of the episode. Yeah. She's the messenger from like Shakespeare or the Greek plays that runs in and goes, this person is coming. This is your whole backstory that you need to know. (laughs) Okay, bye. And then you never see them again. Yeah. Fair enough. Fun fact. The person who played, um, what's her name? Doris. Mm -hmm. Uh, Her name is Penina Segal. She is now a professor at USC. 
job teaching what? Uh, she is a assistant professor at the Keck School of Medicine. Wow. Dang. Okay. Good for her. A lot of doctors coming out of this show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just after Doris leaves, Six shows up with Adrian. They're laughing about something that happened earlier that day. Clearly bonded and friends. And as they sit down to join Blossom, Bobby walks by, says hi to Adrian. So it's clear that she's very popular and people like her. Mm -hmm. But Adrian talks about how hard it is being the new person, which it doesn't seem like it is because she's immediately invited to go sit with the popular boys. So she's very excited and invites Six to come sit with her and the popular boys, but she doesn't invite Blossom. In fact, she's already forgotten Blossom's name. So Six is excited to to go sit with the popular boys and Blossom and Six do that thing that all girls do where Blossom says it's okay for her to go, but she doesn't really mean it. And then when Six takes her up on the offer, she gets mad that she didn't know. No, I I refute that. That is not every girl. (laughs) Every girl on TV. Okay. All right. I will give you that. I I was going to I was going to ask if this was real. I mean, sometimes, but. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's exaggerated on TV. This is a best friend test. I was like, is it? Which, like, rude. I hate when people pull that crap. Well, and also, like, her example is Lucy did it to Ethel all the time from I Love Lucy, which is, again, a TV show, not real life. Like, you don't treat people like that in real life. Mm-hmm. And Lucy and Ethel are just, like, agents of chaos. Don't yeah. <laughs> base your friendship off of that. Right. Expect something good to come out of it. Chaotic evil. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so Bobby comes over to get six and Blossom says it's OK, but again, doesn't mean it. And so, and six goes anyways. And I want to know, is this supposed to be the same Bobby from my sister's keeper? I don't think so. Uh, I feel like Bobby was a popular name. I'm sure there's more than one Bobby. I was trying to remember what his name was, like what his last name was in my sister's keeper. And I think it might have. Was it Brewer? OK, yeah. so here it's Bobby <laughs> Del Vecchio. So yeah. If you're keeping tabs, we have a Bobby B and a Bobby D. But you know what? All the boys in this cafeteria have the sweetest mullets and windbreakers. Yeah, the most 90s looks. Oh, hell yeah. (laughs) So scene four, we're in the Russo's living room. It's later that day. Blossom asks Joey if he's ever lost a a best friend. She wants to get some advice on how to deal with with her situation with Six. And Joey being Joey takes it literally and says that, yes, he has. He turned around once in the supermarket and his friend was just gone. So as Blossom is deciding how to respond to Joey's display of stupidity, Tony enters and shares that he's been working on a script all day, but he's stuck on the dialogue. So he reads them what he has so far, which basically amounts to two hot girls wearing very little enter a room and the male English teacher is about to speak. I like it. Yeah. So just based on this, I want to kind of talk about this movement that has started happening in the last few years. And it's women, feminist writers, just people on Twitter going into male written books and finding descriptions of women, <laughs> like physical descriptions and how ridiculous they are. So oh, there are a few different yeah. avenues you can go to look up this stuff. It's truly wild. Yeah. One of the more popular ones. There's a Twitter account. Yeah, there's a Twitter one. It's called Men Writing Women. It was started <laughs> in 2019 by Megan Von Driska. And yeah, just compi- compiling what people have found. And there is some truly like the amount of time men have personified women's breasts where they literally are like thinking their own thoughts based on the situation. (laughs) Yeah. Her breasts moved inward. Like they were depressed (laughs) shit like that. It's (laughs) truly insane. It's one of my favorite Twitter accounts. It's so funny. It's It's terrible, but funny. In the words of Rachel Bloom, they're just sacks of yellow fat. They're just sacks of yellow fat, my dudes. Yeah. Mm. Nothing special about them. <laughs> so if you want to laugh, but also to hate men a little bit, like if that's just the vibe you're feeling that day, mm-hmm. I highly recommend the Twitter feed Men Writing Women. There's also the subreddit Bad Women's Anatomy. <laughs> yes. Which is, I think, some like published content and some just boys on the internet not understanding women and that is also quite amusing it does make it difficult i will say after i learned about this it was something i always knew but had never really acknowledged if that makes sense yeah but having read a few books after looking at this twitter thread it's actually really difficult to read books sometimes now because you start noticing it Mm -hmm. i remember finding 
like an image of a Tumblr post of women writing like how men write like this yeah. and like just making fun of it. And it starts out kind of normal and gets like progressively weirder. Like it's one paragraph. And the only line I remember because it was so funny was she boobed breastily down the stairs. <laughs> I remember reading that. Yeah. 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 Which is not too far off from some of the passages you will find on yes. these threads. It's yes. true. It's true. Do yourself a favor. This also <laughs> reminds me of like, what well, this is early 90s. So a lot of those like National Lampoon movies that were like overly mm -hmm. over sexualized yeah. started coming around, coming out around this time. So. It's Which is probably felt... why he thought he would sell it so quickly. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, the National Lampoons and the American Pies. and Well, American Pie was a little bit later, but... Yeah. yeah. Fun fact about American Pie, some of the later sequels were filmed at our university. Yep. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah Naked Mile moving forward. Yeah. Ooh. You know why I know that? Because I was wandering around the university at that time. And... Are you in the movie? Oh, I was. If I am in the movie, it's me walking by because I'm on my way to class or like just randomly <laughs> standing around being like, why are they filming something here? Yeah, <laughs> I, I remember watching one. It was one of the like straight to like video ones. And there's a pig running through a courtyard. And I went, that's the art squad. <laughs> that is the naked mile, I believe. Yeah. And then I had to like look it up and I was like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. My friend is in one of those movies. Yeah. Really? Yeah. She plays. That's how they a, kept getting Eugene Levy. She plays. I believe her title was Hot Girl. Yeah, nah. I'm pretty ah. sure is what her name was on there. Yeah, either they kept getting Eugene Levy because they were filming at Mac or they got Mac because they had Eugene Levy. We totally just triangulated where we are, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Have we not talked about? <laughs> I don't think so. We've said oh. we're Canadian. Hey, I mean, hey. I mean, it's not that hard to look up where these movies were filmed. Yeah, bud. <laughs> All right. So back to Blossom. That's your buddy guy. That's your guy, buddy. <laughs> So after Tony shares his uh, three lines of, of a screenplay, Blossom says it's nice, but it needs work. But Joey, in true Joey fashion, once again, is hooked. So Blossom notices that Tony still has the divorce papers, and she says that she'll give them to Nick because Tony hasn't. And just then, Nick enters, looking even worse than he did that morning. Again, the kids give a peppy hello in unison, and Nick still knows something up. something's up. So he asks if there was a fire. Of course there wasn't. So Blossom asks Nick where he was, and Nick explains that he was at the dentist where he had a root canal and most of his gums removed. Which, uh, I don't think that's a thing, is it? I, I don't know. But he Sounds like when you do a root canal, you do dig out a lot of the gums. So. Ugh, the dentist is awful. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't want it. Uh, <laughs> so just like that morning, Blossom chickens out and gives Nick a hug instead of giving him the papers. Uh, there's this really cute moment where Blossom says, Anthony's right, we don't hug enough, and then Tony and Joey hug each other, uh, which I just thought was kind of funny. So Nick still knows that something's weird. He asks if someone's been arrested. No, mm -hmm. they haven't. So he tells them that he will find out what's going on, but he can't do it right now because his mouth is numb, so if he yells, he might bite his tongue yeah. in half. It's some really good post-dentist acting. Mm. by Ted Wass here. Yeah. He's always spot on. It's really hard to do entire scenes while acting like your face is asleep. Yeah, like you can't yeah. move your face. So, Nick leaves. Joey says, all right, Blossom and Tony, you guys couldn't give him the papers, so I'll do it. So he takes the papers and leaves. And Blossom and Tony... Tony asks why Blossom's not at the mall with, with Six. It's Monday. So Blossom explains about Adrian and how it says that Six and Adrian were practically joined at the hip all day. So Tony says, why don't you call Six? She's probably sitting at home waiting for you. You always go to the mall together on Monday. So Blossom does, but Six isn't there. She's at the mall with Adrian. That bitch. <laughs> uh, right? How dare she? So it's the next day. We're back in the cafeteria. Doris has a new wig, <laughs> hoping no one will recognize her, but it doesn't work. Six shows up to sit with Blossom and Doris. But just as she's about to join them, Adrian runs over and asks Six what she's doing. The guys are over there. Adrian, again, has already forgotten Blossom's name. So Adrian tells Six that she saved her a seat and also got her a ticket to rupture. And this sends Blossom and Six into the first big fight that we've mm -hmm. seen. Blossom is hurt that Six would go to the costume with Adrian, not her. But Six reminds Blossom that she didn't even want to go and she's not a mind mm -hmm. reader. If Blossom said she didn't want to go, how was she supposed to know that she really did? Then Blossom calls Six dumb. 
which is that's harsh. Yeah. I just have in caps preach six. This whole scene six is absolutely yeah. right. 100 percent right. And you know what? I there's nothing even wrong with Adrian. And, you know, she's painted in this light of just because she was immediately popular and she happens to be pretty that she's what, like out to get somebody's best friend, which she's not. She's a girl who just came to a new school, happened to find someone who she likes and is trying to make friends at this new school. She doesn't know their whole past. Do you automatically remember everybody's name as soon as you meet them? (laughs) She's immediately painted as this mean girl and that's not necessarily the case. I, I think there's a way to be to say like, I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Can you remind me? And there's a way to, and I don't know that Adrian necessarily does that politely. I'm not saying she's a saint, but we no, get two lines like, out of the girl and she ruins a friendship. It, it I don't, the whole yeah. way this was, I know that the episode is about Blossom's own insecurities. Yeah. And how she sees Adrian. Yeah, exactly. I think we're supposed to see things from Blossom's point of view. I just get mad when mean girls are written with no real reason. Yeah. So the fight ends with Six storming off, saying that she's going to the concert with Adrian and not Blossom. So then we cut to a classic Blossom dream sequence. (laughs) She's in the kitchen talking to her dad on the phone. And when she turns around, we can see that she is now an old lady. She has all the trappings of being dressed like an old lady. She has the Mm -hmm. short white hair, the oversized glasses on the chain, the, the cardigan, everything. So she says she explains to Nick on the phone that after searching for 66 years, she's (laughs) finally found a friend to replace six and they're going to be best friends forever. And she hangs up and in walks her new friend, who is none other than Sophia from Golden Girls. Yeah. Yeah. Now, Jen, I know that you're a huge Golden Girls fan, so I want to know what your reaction was when Sophia walked in. So uh, I don't know if I'd say I'm a huge fan. I've definitely watched it through not like top to tail but if it was on reruns i would watch it i i loved how sassy it was i feel I like did you when yeah. i was watching the episode and just screamed sophia <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i feel like golden girls was your blossom like how i would watch blossom you would watch golden girls yeah like it wasn't religious about it but if it was on i would watch it because it yeah. was funny and apparently i've just always been planning my future for being a sassy old lady because i wasn't like who are these old ladies i was like i want to be this though yeah we've already <laughs> made plans so that's what we're doing when we're yeah. old <laughs> oh yeah so here's the question eric which mm. golden girl are you oh god <sighs> this is gonna be a hard question this is a very important question for our age everybody should know they're golden girl mm. Well, Mal, you said who yours was, I think. Uh, I think I said I was Rose. Yeah. (laughs) Also, I'm pretty sure I told you that Rose reminded me of my Bubby. Yes. Yeah. Which I agree with. Yeah. (laughs) Because she's Uh. just sweet and like just wants everyone to be happy. My grandma was a nicer version of Sophia. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hmm. Do you have it, Eric? No, I'm just trying to think because I don't think I fit any of them really. You're a Blanche, aren't Am you? I? Oh, God. I, I was going to say, I don't think I'm a Blanche. But I guess I have been very flirty in the past. <laughs> I guess. You don't, don't have don't, to have one. Now I feel bad. No, no. I, I'm like, I don't think I'm as sassy as Dorothy. I'm not as sweet as Rose. Well, I think we know who the Dorothy is here. It me. Yeah. <laughs> You're not Sophia? I feel like if I the <laughs> both, that just makes me a really big bitch. I can choose one or the other, but I can't possibly be both <laughs> because then I wouldn't have friends. Her comebacks are way better, though. Sophia's comebacks are way better. That's true. Dorothy just kind of gets mad. It's the Dorothy side eye that I like. Yeah. That's, that's what you have when somebody says something dumb and just the way that she stares at them. Like, that's that's you. That's me. Yeah. yeah. I would like to say I'm a rose, but I know I'm not. You're not innocent enough for a <laughs> no. rose. God, am I a Blanche? God damn it. (laughs) Come back to us at the end of the episode. Yeah, we'll come back to it. So, Sophia walks in. She tells Blossom that she's leaving, calling Blossom pathetic, and telling Blossom (laughs) that she whines and is gassy. 
<laughs> and that the only reason she stayed lo- around so long was because Blossom paid her to. Yeah. But now. <laughs> saddest. That's the saddest. Yeah. But now she's going to live with her new friend who has just arrived to pick her up. And it's not six. It's 60. <laughs> I giggle for that. I love that. Can just say with with all like, and it's Estelle Getty, right? I just lost yeah. the actress's name. Yeah. So Estelle Getty and uh, Van Oort look so much alike. Once you see them in the same makeup and wigs, oh yeah. my god. Like, could be related. Yeah. So, Blossom is hurt that she's losing her best friend again and begs them not to leave. And then she wakes up from her dream. Yeah. So then we cut to Saturday night. The Russos are having family game night and the kids look as though they're being held captive. <laughs> and Nick tells them that they can stop playing family board games once somebody tells them what's going on. Nobody will, so they're going to continue. But Nick gets up to get a snack, leaving the kids to discuss what they're going to do, how they're going to get out of this. Joey said that he couldn't give Nick the papers because his dad's clearly a lonely guy if he's spending his first free Saturday in months playing board games with his kids. Oh. This would be a treat now. Yeah, yes. I was going to say, Eric, as a parent, how did that make you feel? I don't know. I thought I like board game night. Yeah, I feel like... I like spending time with my kids. Yeah, I don't think that makes you lonely. I think that makes you fulfilled. I think just the impression of board games now is so different than what it was back then. It was a boring thing to do, sit down with your family and play board games. Oh, that's such an old timey thing to do. Mm -hmm. And now everybody's just so tired, maybe, of technology to a point where getting back to that. I think sitting in a room without our phones and playing board games with people is appealing. Also, our board games are way better now. Yeah, I was oh, going to yeah. say, I think board games have evolved. It's not just Trivial Pursuit and Monopoly. Like, there's Although way I love more Trivial com- Pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as I'm saying that, those are the games that I would choose. <laughs> but there's there's a lot more complex games huh. that it's become like a real thing. That you people can keep love. your friends because you don't have to play Risk if you don't want to. Yeah. Risk. Ugh, Wonderful. I love that game. game. <laughs> yeah. Mm-mm. Take Australia. <laughs> So Nick comes back and the group reluctantly start playing a board game again because they're not going to tell Nick what's going on. And I want to know what game this is. But anyways, Tony's question is, what is 28 grams? (laughs) And just to remind us, because they haven't mentioned it since the beginning of the episode that he's a drug addict. Mm -hmm. Tony's response is about twenty five hundred dollars plus mandatory jail time. I like that. I thought that was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Well, I was going to say by the length of the audience's laugh, this was high comedy in 1991. Mm -hmm. I laughed the same. It's high comedy now. Damn straight. (laughs) That was the longest laugh break I think we've seen. That uh, trumps your theory too, Eric, that they only ever talk about pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even more so moving forward. Yeah, yeah. So Joey almost gives in to the torture of family games night, but he doesn't. So the games continue. Nick threatens them with Chinese checkers, old maid and (laughs) Perquacky. Is Perquacky a real game? It is. I looked it up. Did you? Okay. It's basically Boggle, but you get the letters with a dice and cup like Yahtzee. But same basic principle. It's um, as many words that you can do with three letters or more. That sounds awesome. Yeah. All right, next family game nights, we're playing Perquacky. Perquacky. We should do a Twitch stream of IMO playing Perquacky. Yeah. <laughs> so when, when those threats don't work, Nick moves on to family song time, <laughs> singing Kumbaya at the piano, and the kids still get, don't give in. So Nick finally decides that maybe he's taking the wrong approach. So they can leave, but he says, as your father who loves you, I'm asking you to stay here and talk with me. Joey and Tony literally run out of the house. But Blossom sticks around. She's clearly upset. So Nick suggests that she call Six and go to a movie, but Blossom says they're not friends anymore. She explains about Adrian taking Six away from her and that they went to see Rupture, the weird vomit band. (laughs) So (laughs) Nick tells Blossom to, to go, but she says it wouldn't be the same without Six. And Nick agrees, but he says it could still be fun. And he tells her that you can't force people to stay with you. If they choose to leave, you have to let them go and and move on. And that kind of clicks for Blossom with the whole divorce thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And Nick offers to pay for Blossom and another friend to go to the concert. And Blossom realizes that her dad has let someone go and move on. So she gives him the divorce papers. 
Nick is the coolest. And yeah. if I were a kid, this would be the coolest night of my life. Mm. Playing board games with my family, doing a family sing along. And then my dad <laughs> just sends me to a rock concert. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that would be the best. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then we're at the concert. Blossom and Doris are waiting in line for the bathroom because there's always a line for the ladies room. Yeah. <sighs> and then there's a joke that I just really did not like, which was. Doris asked if she bought a t-shirt and Blossom says no, but she bought a souvenir finger that you stick down your throat. Yeah. I just I, ugh, did not age well. I've never liked that joke. It makes sense, but it, uh, it, like the joke makes sense with what we know of the band. band yeah. But uh, it's real dodgy. Yeah. There's yeah. a lot of implications there. Yeah. 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 So then Six shows up and asks Dora, Doris if she can butt in front of her in line. She doesn't even recognize Doris, which makes Doris feel fantastic that she's <laughs> finally found an outfit to, to hide her shame. So Doris decides that instead of going to the bathroom, she's just going to meet Blossom back at the seats. And Blossom and Six try to make some awkward small talk about the concert, but they're both clearly still mad. So finally, Six gives up on the small talk and tells Blossom that she can't believe she's acting like this and she should be more upset about their fallout. So we get into a little back and forth here. Blossom says she is upset, but there's nothing she can do about it if Six doesn't want to be her friend anymore. And Six says that Blossom's the one who doesn't want to be friends. Blossom accuses Six of ditching her for Adrian. And Six accuses Blossom of snubbing her all week. Six is right. Yeah. (laughs) So finally, Blossom mentions that they didn't even go to the mall together on Monday. And Six points out that Blossom is the one who didn't show up. Yeah. That Six was at the mall and Blossom didn't show up. Mm -hmm. Bam! dropping some truth bombs there Mm -hmm. um (laughs) so six admits that she didn't even want to go to the mall with adrian adrian just tagged along and six Mm -hmm. didn't feel like there was anything she could do and blossom says she thought that six didn't want blossom to go there but six says of course she did they're best friends yeah so blossom is still hurt and still you know thinks that six doesn't want to hang out with her and says, well, of course you'd want to hang out with Adrian. She's sophisticated. She's gorgeous. She's popular. And six says the sweetest thing, which is, yeah, she's just like you. Aww. Right. Well, how big of a dick would you feel like? Yeah. If somebody said that to you after mm-hmm. all of this, mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I feel like I would be like, well, I don't feel any of those right now because yeah. I've just been kind of an asshole. <laughs> but in any case, they make up and then we cut to the next scene. We're back in the Russo's living room. Nick is playing the blues on the piano as Blossom arrives home from the concert. She tells Nick that she and Six made up, that the whole thing was a misunderstanding. And then she admits that she and her brothers were holding on to the divorce papers for the whole week because they didn't want to upset Nick. And Nick tells Blossom he's okay with the divorce, but he asks if she is. And she shares that part of her thought that if he didn't sign the papers, there's a chance her, her parents could get back together, which I think is a pretty normal dream for a lot of children of divorce that yeah that maybe there's a chance her her parents can get back together for sure and nick understands but he he tells her in the most loving way possible that it is over and they're not getting back together and that this way might be harder but it's it's better in the long run yeah Mm -hmm. so they share that sweet moment and then blossom heads up to bed but stops on the stairs and watch nick sign the paper They both let out a little bit of a sigh and we end on this slightly unresolved note similar to last week. Yeah. And that is, I ain't got nobody. What a roller coaster of an episode. Yeah. Yeah. So let's move on to outfit of the week (laughs) and let's start with Eric. Well, I'm obviously going to go with the, the old age outfits in the dream (laughs) because they were perfect. They were just all golden girl esque perfect. And it made me happy. And to see Six perfectly look like an old lady, it's just amazing. I I loved how they were all dressed the same, but slightly different. Like Mm -hmm. they looked like they had gone to the Golden Girl set and pulled out (laughs) and pulled out old Sophia costumes to put on Blossom and Six. Maybe they did. It's possible. I wonder if they shot on the same lot. Maybe. I don't know. But with their their connection with Zane Busby, I'm sure that they they could have just gone and got some of those. You Zane Busby doing the impossible. Jen, your outfit of the week? 
I'm going to let you go first because I have so I have so many thoughts about costumes this week and okay. I need to hear what everyone else picks. OK, right? so as I'm looking at what I wrote down, I realized that I didn't choose the outfit at the beginning. So you can talk about that in a minute. But okay. my outfit of the week was Six's concert look. So mm-hmm. she has these this denim short with a matching denim short sleeve jacket. I think it was short sleeve. So the denim shorts have sequins around like the bottom cuff and the, sh- the jacket has matching sequins on like the lapel. And then she has this pink, blue and yellow double heart brooch and a massive iridescent purple bow on her head. Mm-hmm. She was one of the most tame looking people at that concert for yeah. once in her life. Yeah, it was so good. Oh, that's me, isn't it? Okay. So this outfit I'm going to talk to is not my outfit of the week, but we need to talk about it because I I don't know who was drunk when they were designing (laughs) this episode. But if you're watching along with us, just pause on every scene and look at all the details because it is truly insane. The things they put on bodies this week. So the first episode that Blossom has, and I know I've ragged on Blossom's costumes a lot. This uh, after this one, I feel like I never need to do it again. She's wearing this dress that's like this patch tartan, which we've seen her in before and can be cute. But this time it's like a tent dress with bell sleeves, which is the for those that don't know, it's the sleeves that kind of start tight at the top and billow out sort of like a piratey situation on the sleeve. So there's no structure to this dress. It's just a straight out tent dress, which she has put a petticoat underneath. Mm hmm. So she literally looks like a big top tent in this <laughs> weird tartany fabric. And she has not only done that, on top of this dress, she has chosen a brooch that as much as I zoomed in, I couldn't tell, but it sort of looked like a plushy finger puppet witch <laughs> that presumably she just stuck a pin on and called it a brooch. And her headband, which she wears a million headbands, this headband in particular is a super chunky black velvet with a weird knob in on the top Mm -hmm. directly like unicorn style on the top of her head. Mm -hmm. It is a true trip of an outfit. So please go look at it. I would love if we could put this on socials Mm because I couldn't get over it. Yeah. So that was clearly not my favorite outfit of the week. I I almost picked it it because it was so bizarre, but then I liked Six's outfit better. It is truly the outfit of a preteen making her own choices. Yeah. (laughs) Like in its purest form. Well, and I think that's why they chose it. Like, I think they tried to have someone who had her, her own fashion sense and was also like figuring things out, like figuring fashion out. I was that weird kid. I wore such weird stuff. I mean, me too, but there's always a line. (laughs) Or, you know, if you're getting paid for your job to dress other people, (laughs) you know, there's always a line. Anyways, I had to talk about that one. So funny enough, my outfit of the week is Six's outfit contrasting Blossom in those scenes. And I'm going to get a little technical about why I like this so much. So what Six is wearing is she is wearing a purple a sweater sort of in a, a peplum style like empire rise waist kind of flary bottom but she's pairing it with like a like not an olive green um it's more of like a yellow green but it's a really mm-hmm. hard to find color in any fabric in my experience but she's managed to pair that color on her hat and her skirt and i was like how how did you Somebody made these because there's no way you can find two things that match in this color. So she's doing that. And the hat and the skirt both have a little black lace trim. Again, completely matching two colors that shouldn't go together. This green and this purple. Somehow she made it work. Yeah. I liked it just on a technical level of how they accomplished it. Yeah. I think six definitely becomes the more like fashionable one. Mm -hmm. And Blossom is the more experimental one. Yeah. So that was me being technical this week of why I liked something. So cool. <laughs> Big nerd. <laughs> yeah. So let's move on to lesson of the week. I'll go first. Sure. Why not? So my lesson of the week was, as Nick says, you can't force people to stay with you. Sometimes you have to let them go and move on. Yeah. I think we don't learn that so much in the A story with, with Blossom and Six, because that's really just about communication. But in the B story of of them being afraid of Nick being upset about the divorce it's Mm -hmm. and Blossom coming to terms with it as well. It's you have to 
you have to let go sometimes. Mm. Yeah. But it works for the both plots because I know, man, when I was younger, I used to be so weird with some of my friends and like, I would, I didn't have lots of friends growing up. So when I got yeah. to university and had friends, it was sort of weird when some of them would just like go off and I'd be like, Oh, okay, cool. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but like, yeah, you can't, you can't make people stay and you know, the ones yeah. that stay are worth it. Eh? Mm -hmm. eh? Uh, uh, <laughs> so, it means us. I mean, yeah. you guys. <laughs> So, you know, it, I, I think that is a good lesson for even for both plots. I think that's my yeah. lesson of the week as well. And Jen? The same thing, but I was mad at Blossom, so I said it in a bitchier way. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. <laughs> I, had, I had a real Golden Girls energy. <laughs> what did you write? You are not the center of everyone's universe. <laughs> yep. Well, now I feel worse. Thank that's, you. That's I know. Now I feel shitty because of what you said. <laughs> no, but that's... <laughs> That's fantastic. True. I think I think that's slightly different, but I think it's a hundred percent also valid for for this episode yeah. because yeah, Blossom is basically mad that Six is maybe making another friend, and that doesn't mean yeah. that they need to stop being friends. It just means that there's more friends. Yeah, um, I feel like from clearly from this episode, we see that their friendship has been really insular, and mm -hmm. until this episode, we haven't seen anyone else come into the mix. I don't know mm -hmm. if we ever will. We'll see, but that's not healthy. No. <laughs> They need to branch you know? out. Add Dorison, right? She needs. I need. I need more Dorison. They got rid of my Agnes. I need more Doris. I know. <laughs> so, out of five new girls in school, <laughs> Eric, what is your score? I would give this a um, a Schmidt. <laughs> I said in school. New girls <laughs> in school. They could have been in school. <laughs> I would probably give this a three point five or a four. I think not perfect, but pretty good. Gave me lots of feels. There you go. Yeah. Jen? Said it too. Oh! <laughs> and, and the note is because Blossom is so goddamn infuriating and the costumes were confusing. I like that Blossom wasn't the good guy in this episode. That's what made it, me like it a lot. Yeah, no, I know it was needed and we need to see character flaws. I just... Yeah. I felt personal rage. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. But, you, but only two, even though Sophia showed up? I mean, that's why it wasn't a one. Oh! <gasps> savage but it wasn't a bad episode so no it was obligatory content i was just so mad watching it <laughs> i i gave it a four because i thought there was a good balance of humor and serious moments mm -hmm. however i really did not like the souvenir finger choke i thought that was in poor taste yeah, yeah. i had Agreed. forgotten about it until you even told me again yeah. about it so that's our episode thanks you guys for for chatting with me. Yeah. Next week, we're doing season one, episode seven. Thanks for the Memorex. Wordplay. Wordplay. And we will see you next week. Bye. 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 Thanks for listening to In My Opinionation. Don't forget to rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever else you get your podcasts. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at I Am Opinionation, our website at IamOpinionation.com, or email us at OpinionationPod at gmail.com. We'd love to hear your opinionation about this or any future episodes. New episodes come out every Tuesday. Thanks again for listening, and until next week, the sun is going to surely shine.